sean bienvenidos a este gran festival del Pulcata Fest. Hoy queremos compartirles la gran sabiduría y majestuosidad de nuestras danzas mexicanas, de nuestro hermoso juego de pelota. Pero antes quiero compartirles un poco de lo que es la esencia del maguey, de lo que es la esencia del pulque. Gracias al señor Quetzalcóatl y a la señora Mayagüel que escaparon de las tierras de los señores del cielo, de las tierras de los dioses, cuando la hermosa Mayagüel bajó sobre la tierra, se enamoró del señor Quetzalcóatl. Pero Pulque Past and Present. What is pulque? Pulque is a fermented beverage that comes from the maguey or agave plant. It is a beverage whose presence has continuously existed from ancient Mesoamerican times and continues to have a presence throughout modern Mexico today. How is pulque made? First, a hole is carved in the middle of a mature agave for which maturity can range anywhere from 7 to 25 years old. The typical age, though, is 12 years, which still requires a lot of planning and preparation. That hole allows a sweet sap to collect, which is called aguamiel. Some people do drink the plain aguamiel without any further processing. The sap is then allowed to ferment for a period of up to 30 days, in ancient times, we have records that it could be even longer. After fermentation, the beverage is considered pulque and is ready to be used. However, in its non-distilled or non-pasteurized form, it does not keep for very long. Pulque's presence from then to now. First, we'll look at pulque in pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica. Then we'll look at pulque in colonial Mexico and pulque in modern Mexico. Pulque in pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica. Pulque in Mayawal and other connected pulque deities are depicted in both the pre- and post-conquest manuscripts, such as the post-conquest Florentine Codex pictured here. Pulque is present in multiple pre-Columbian codices also, such as the Codex Vendobonensis. Not only is there evidence of pulque among the Aztec Mexica, but there are also ample artifacts showing pulque use in the classic Maya era as well. Pulque was a drink of gods and kings. As a drink of the gods, it was used in ceremonies and rituals and in instances of human coescence with the gods. Pulque was seen as an important way to connect with gods and ancestors. It was also a drink of the kings. Pulque was not a daily beverage for the common society members. However, it would have made up the diet of Aztec or Mesoamerican royalty for more than just community feasts. And it is more than once described as part of Montezuma's evening meal. Not only was pulque a drink of gods and kings, but it was also a drink of priests and sacrificial victims. Yet this is somewhat redundant in reference to the deities. Those who are familiar with the Mesoamerican Cosmovision know that their preparation of the human sacrificial victims viewed their bodies as coessences for the gods to inhabit. By the time they were sacrificed, their bodies had become the gods. It was also used as a drink for community feasting. In Mesoamerican communities such as the Aztecs, individual inebriation was frowned upon and even punished. However, communal drinking and subsequent drunkenness that followed was often seen as an important religious ritual. There are even records showing instances where children took part in pulque drinking. The Oxford Encyclopedia of Mesoamerican Cultures notes that to Mesoamericans, pulque was symbolic of permanence, providing a bridge to ancestral ideas. It also illuminated and provided contact with divinity. Although the Aztec Mexica celebrated pulque and the alcoholic maguey drinks, they did not view drunkenness as appropriate. In fact, it was actually punishable by death for the extremely inebriated 
as illustrated in this image from the Florentine Codex. It is noted that commoners would have been executed publicly, while if royalty fell to the same vice, their execution would be private. According to an illustrated dictionary of the gods and symbols of ancient Mexico and the Maya, the first known personification of Mesoamerica, spelling mistake, appears at the classic site of Teotihuacan. One of the deities most often associated with Pulque was Maya Wall. Maya Wall was the goddess of the Maguey, which gave life to the Mesoamericans in many forms. Pulque had a key role, but the Maguey or agave was multi-purpose, from drinks to food to even clothing, an instrument of punishment or self-sacrifice, and shelter. It was certainly a source of life and flourishing in nearly every form. Whereas Mayawal was the goddess of the Magay, it was her son, Omatatli, who was the collective deity of Puke, his name meaning two rabbits. Connected with Puke and drunkenness are also the 400 rabbits or Sinsontontlin. In the Aztec Mexica worldview or cosmovision, gods were not immune to falling into the temptation of human vices. Quetzalcoatl, one of the Aztec Mexica's primary and most important gods, had his downfall when his brother, Tezcatlipoca, disguised himself as an old man and gave Quetzalcoatl too much pulque. Now let's look at pulque in post-conquest colonial Mexico. There was not mass prohibition of pulque. After the Spanish occupied the Mesoamerican lands, there was not a mass prohibition of all alcohol, as there was in other areas of the world, such as the United States. Like most societies, the Spanish looked down upon public drunkenness. But unlike the Mesoamerican worldview, they did not distinguish between individual drunkenness and communal drinking. In this way, the immediate impact of the conquest was to transform pulque into an individual drink rather than its previous communal form. There were regional differences in the prohibition, and some areas did limit or prohibit pulque production. These are rare, but in most cases, pulque production simply went underground. On the haciendas, even some pulque producing haciendas, owners and managers looked for ways to cheaply feed laborers while getting as much work from them as possible. We would probably call this exploitation. It was in this way that pulque was used as an energy drink. Workers would begin with a liter of pulque and some tortilla, then work six hours. Sometimes that morning pulque had to fuel an entire breakless 12-hour workday. The worker's energy was credited to pulque. In more modern work, it's also been called the Mexican Viagra. Puque Haciendas played an important role even just a few years after the conquest, as Puque was an important resource for many reasons. The Puque economy also surged during the time of the Mexican Revolution, as it continued to provide a cheap alcoholic beverage. It then became viewed, it gradually became viewed as a drink of the poor and a dirty drink. Part of this aspect will be connected with the next slide, but in the latter part of the 1800s, pulque was increasingly labeled as an unhygienic drink and a drink reserved only for those of the lowest classes. This distinguishing of social castes had already occurred to a large degree, but the emphasis became even stronger in recent centuries. As one example of early beverage caste assignment, it should be noted that in the first decades of post-conquest Mexican society, it was very difficult to grow grapes for wine in what was then called New Spain. Thus, grape wine was reserved for the very upper elite, while pulque began its descent to the lowest segments of society. It should also be noted that the Spanish had an extremely delineated system of social classes, uniquely particular among many other post-Columbian societies in what was called New Spain. Even before the growth of now-famous Mexican beer brands, the introduction of cheap beer, specifically German beers at first, in the 1900s began to replace consumption of cheap pulque, pushing it even further toward the periphery of society. 
Now, let's look at pulque in modern Mexico. You may note that this is the same image here that was used as pulque in ancient Mexico. This is because this image is painted on the side of a pulque truck, representing that continuous connection to the Mesoamerican heritage that is always beneath the surface, even when it is not fully visible. It's also interesting to note that this truck has both Spanish and Nahuatl words. And English, the consumerism marketing details, of course. Tlacuache is the word given to a marsupial animal in Mexico that we would describe as an opossum. One origin story of pulque is that the tlacuache scratched open part of the maguey. A few days later, it returned to drink the sweet agua meal and happily walked home. Several more days later, it returned and drank more, but this time it could not walk well. It was drunk. Some people saw this happen and found the plant and the pulque, and that is the story of how humans discovered pulque. A pulque festival? Perhaps one evidence of the resurgence of pulque's popularity in the modern Mexican limelight is that there was a pulque festival while I was in Carretero, Mexico, to which thousands expressed interest in attending on the Facebook page. I actually did attend, and this is where several of these photos are from. Pulque is becoming more popular in hip and large cities. Visit Carretero, Mexico City, Oaxaca, and many other cities, and you'll find pulque served in the hip areas, not just the roadside pulquerias. From pulque bars to pulque cocktails to Oreo-flavored options, there's quite the mixture of options. Modern icons of pulque continue to pay tribute to the Mesoamerican deities and beliefs, often referencing Maya Well, Quetzalcoatl, Omototli, and others. It was and is viewed as a drink with health benefits. In this way, pulque bears some similarities to how some USA Americans view kombucha, though kombucha is present in Mexico as well. Not everyone loves pulque, but many do have a connection to it. Anecdotally, my questions to others about pulque resulted in pulling out a phone to share a story or shaking their heads in disgust at the mention of pulque, but then recalling a story of a grandfather who made it or of a passing memory of pulque trucks en route for their deliveries. Mexico Profundo, translator of Guillermo Bonfil Batalla's book, Mexico Profundo, Phyllis A. Dennis puts it this way in his foreword to the book. According to Bonfil Batalla, Mexico is not a mestizo country. Rather, it is a country whose majority population continues to be rooted in Mesoamerican civilization and whose way of life reflects cultural patterns and values with thousands of years of history. In this way, I see that pulque is part of the corpus of Mexico profundo present in the lives of the Mexican people. While at the Pulque Festival, I was privileged to sit down with Juan Pablo Sanchez, who was a co-sponsor of the festival and also owner of a Pulque Hacienda. One of the big takeaways that I took away from that conversation was his direct quote that Pulque is a beverage that is alive. For one, it is a living symbol of the ways in which Mesoamerican Cosmovision has stayed alive in spite of 500 years, not centuries, of conquest and oppression. It is also a living beverage in that the microorganisms that make it pulque cannot survive pasteurization or distillation. That means you really have to experience it here in Mexico and you have to experience it in the same land of Aztec gods and kings. What does pulque taste like? It's a somewhat viscous liquid. It looks thick and is somewhat milky in color. When poured, you can usually see a string or two of the thick sap. The fermentation creates a natural carbonation. It does have a slight sweet taste. The sourness will depend on age, species, and quality, and the fermentation. Additives can create a variety of tastes. My favorite was the maracuya, or passion fruit flavor. The multiple versions that I have had in Carrethro taste like a very sweet, very thick passion fruit kombucha. You can't taste the alcohol, but you may feel it after one glass. 
that begs the question, is this re-emergence of pulque really a renaissance or is it a cyclical return? It's important to remember that within the Mesoamerican cosmovision in the Aztec calendar, time is cyclical, not linear. From a linear perspective, we simply see a new stage or a new step forward. But from the Aztec Mexica worldview, perhaps this is a long-awaited return to the cycle. There are other hints in modern-day Mexico of a cyclical return. This was my bibliography.